Welcome to a very special Dakar. No, not only Dakar inside, classic inside. We have a look on 70 years of history of the Unimog, the Universal Motor Gerät in German. And we do that in the Unimog Museum. Now we're getting into the museum, the museum by the back entrance. My name is Ellen Lohr and I lead you not only through the history of the Unimog, but also we are going to have a nice drive together later on. So stay with me. In the museum, of course, you have very different uh, exhibits. It's just a small exhibition, but it's a lot to do for everybody, for children having some fun outside, inside, and for all the adults and interested and fans of the Umimok. They have very different exhibitions here, changing every year, and also there is a lot to do yourself. You can drive nearly all the models from the past and from now, from the present, and also you can co-drive them, of course, if you don't want to drive yourself. But let's start our 70 years inside Unimog story with the number one model. This is it. Well, actually, it's the number six, which was ever built in 1946. 1946, right after the war, there were some engineers thinking of what can we do to earn something for a living and what can we do to help everybody? What does everybody need in those tough times? And uh, then they constructed the Unimog. This tractor here, the little grey Ferguson, that was the state-of-the-art tractor model at that time. But the Unimog, already the model number one, was so much better. If you just have a little look at it, you can see that you have two people driving it instead of one. You don't have only the two wheels you have, uh, which go forward. You have the four-wheel drive on this truck already on this little working machine. And that's the point. It's not only off-road terrain. Uh, uh, what the car is able to do or the truck is able to do, it's a working machine, meaning you had four fixing attachment points in the front, in the rear, between the axles and on the platform where you could put many devices. That's the original name, Universal Motor Gerät. Gerät means devices, implements on in English. And nowadays, you have over 3,500 of these devices from 250 different manufacturers, which you can put on your Unimog. This is, of course, one of the first ones used in agriculture. That was one of the first yeah, areas where the Unimog was used. Later on, it was very much used in the military, pur for military purpose as well, of course. If you follow me a little bit through the exhibition, you will also see not only different models, different special models, but also this one. This is also a special model because it's a future study. Study. It was made in 2011, and if you haven't asked, uh, if you ask me, I, I don't think we will see that really on the road. But nevertheless, it does have some nice features. First of all, it's huge. It's big, big tires, and well, very futuristic. Futuristic is. A keyword, because if you have a look here, this is the cabin of the model from 2000. So a little bit in the past, but still used very much. And the cabin already has a carbon composite uh, structure to put the weight down. And that was very, very futuristic in 2000 to use it on a truck. And of course, it's still used in the future as well and at the present models. Like I said in the beginning, I want to take you on a ride. And that's possible in the Mercedes Unimog Museum as well. So you not only have the exhibition, like I said, you also have the chance to drive yourself. I have the pleasure and honor to be driven by Mr. Heinz Thiemeyer. Thiemeyer. And that's a big pleasure because he knows everything about Unimog. Because on the outside of the museum, you have this fantastic test track. And Mr. T. Meyer is really the number one in his business. He's the number one instructor for all Unimog events on all terrain. So let's join him and go for a ride, a wild ride. Hello. Hello, Mr. T. Meyer. Uh. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Will you take me on a safe ride, please? Yes, I will do. <laughs> Very good. I try to do the same. This is a 1979 model. Till 1977, 200,000 Unimox were already sold, so it was a huge success. It was really used everywhere and for every purpose because you can do everything with this, with this truck. 
Like I'm saying, not only driving, you can really work with it. In 1979, the model already had uh, brisk, uh, disc brakes, not the old drum brakes. And I tell you later on, we will need those. Mr. Tima, how many gears do we have? We have eight gears, four gears for upcountry and four road gears. Mm -hmm. Then we have four by two, four by four and differential lock. Oh, okay. Will we use these differentials? Today? Differential lock we use only if we climb up hills or we go downhill, just for re uh, safety reason. Or we pass a river. We don't know how the ground, so we use the differential lock. I don't think we will but pass a river But with differential lock, you cannot make a turn left or right. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. you're going to lose me, Mr. T. Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 20 degrees S and the maximum that Unimac can do is 38 degrees, so it could be even worse. I was worse enough. Next thing we see is the twist, because this is something very special on the Unimog. You have these two axles, portal axles, axles, which really twist against each other maximum. And that makes the Unimog capable to go everywhere. This is the reason why we used it on the Dakar. Of course, not this 1979 model, but the model you saw earlier on because it's just fantastic, it goes everywhere. If you have a problem, the Unimog will go there and help you. So here, there's something special. It's a hundred percent up incline. Oh! Ooh, and now I'm happy we have the disc brakes so <laughs> going down. We don't break. The whole way I didn't, didn't break. Okay, Mr. Tima is, is such a safe. tough guy, he's not breaking. Because Unimog is so high, of course, all the holes and, and, and ditches are no uh. problem for this truck. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was 79 hard work to drive <laughs> the Unimog one whole day. That must have been hard work either. A little bit like Dakar. But in Dakar, you, are, you wear some safety belts and some helmets. So what do we have here now? So we use first gear because we go very slowly because of the cameraman behind. I'm happy that we have the cameraman so. behind. We go very slowly. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. It's really a car for the eternity. I mean, can you imagine 79 and it's still doing stuff like that? It's unbelievable. Actually, the four-wheel drive, the four attachment points, the differential, these are the key figures which still stay the same till today. And it was more or less the milestones for the success of the Unimog. So what we do next is 60% up, but with some steps inside. Let's do how the car is managing this. And have a look, you only will see the sky. And now down. Mr. Timaya is not using any pedal. Nothing. He just lets the thing roll. Hopefully that works. If it would be too slippery now, he should have to, he should ex uh, accelerate. It's a little bit like driving in the dunes with a Dakar truck or a Dakar car. You go up in the dunes, you see nothing, you don't know what is behind and you have to trust in the car that it goes down and not falls over, that you did everything well. And even in the sand, you should not break. So I'm used to that. So let's do the twist from the other side. You can see in the mirror what we are doing at the moment. All the Unimux have a very small bulk in the front, meaning you co can go more or less everywhere because you don't destroy something in the front, like a Dakar car as well. Okay, and this is so 20 degrees <laughs> again, Mr. T. Meyer, what yes. are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> For I cannot imagine 38 degrees, really. <laughs> oh, la, la. This is also very tricky. 
because it's deep holes. Very, very sharp holes. So let's see how the Unimog is doing this. Will we have a problem here? No, nothing. No problem for the Unimog. Do you love the Unimog, Mr. I Timmeyer? Like are you sometimes more than my wife <laughs> <laughs> i think this is not only especially mr timaya this is no. all the fans of the unimog a little bit this a little bit freaky aren't they <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 i can totally imagine that they love this truck because it's so fantastic what you can do in this kind of adventure oh. i think even this Unimog could tow me in a Dakar through the dunes if necessary, till today. We wouldn't be the quickest, that's for sure, but we would get safe back into the bivac. So slow for the cameraman again. Yes. So, now. Accelerate, speed, <laughs> Mr. Timaya. Ah, no, 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 sorry, stop. <laughs> hey. Fantastic. <laughs> it shows thumb up. That was a very nice experience, so. Mr. Timaya. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. Hope to see you again soon. I hope so. so Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> that was nice, but I still prefer my Dakar Unimog, uh, even when I'm only co driving it again. Well, nevertheless, you saw what you can experience in the Unimog Museum. Isn't that great? I mean, this is what you can do yourself if you like and if you think you can do it on this really nice track where the Unimogs, the different models, show their abilities. Over 40,000 spectators and visitors every year in the Unimog Museum that makes this museum one of the biggest in Germany, actually. So come here, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed our Unimog inside, our classic inside for the 70 years of the Unimog. I go and take the opportunity to co-drive the Dakar Unimog again. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>